Good morning. How is everyone? What are we making today? We're going to make something. And it is kid friendly, community boost when they're sick, help with so many things. We've got company. <laughs> I've got a lot of work going on in the background today, some repairs happening. So it might get a little bit noisy. What we're going to do is an oxymel. Um, an oxymel is basically medicine that you can use not having to use alcohol. There's a lot of people that can't have alcohol for whatever reason. And there's also the fact that some people don't want to give their children tinctures. So with that being said, you can make an oxymel. Um, you can also you make a glycerite, but a lot of people don't have food grade glycerin in their homes And this is something that most people have in their homes. You the spices are in your spice cabinet they're uh, antiviral antifungal, etc. So you get the benefits from it So the first thing we are going to need is your jar I'm only making a small amount of this. I actually have a pint jar, which is about two cups total. Um, so what you need, and you can pull it out, and I try to pull things out that I have. Ooh! Thank you. That was pretty cool. Um, ground thyme. Thyme is wonderful on a medicinal level. It helps with coughs, lung, throat, um, Children can take it. Wonderful. So I pulled this out of my cabinet. Um, I use this gigantic thing to cook with also. It's just sage. You could pull McCormick sage out of your cabinet if you would like to. And use this. It works just the same. And then oregano. Oregano is a wonderful, wonderful herb to use in healing. So you, again, you could just pull whatever oregano you have in your spice cabinet along with the thyme as I did, or your sage. You always wanna to try to use apple cider vinegar that has the mother. You don't have to use Bragg's. You could go ahead and use any. You could use what you make yourself. If you know don't know how to do your own homemade apple cider vinegar, I do have some videos in my file um, that shows you how to do that, and it's really easy. You can just use apple scraps and water. You can use honey, sugar, or you don't even need to add a sweetener. It just helps move it along quicker because it loves that sugar to feed off of. It could just feed off the apple sugar within the, or the fruit itself. So you'll need apple cider vinegar, and I would strongly suggest that you use local raw honey. Local honey is going to give you the benefits of the local bees and the pollination of the local um, flowers and things. So if you have allergies, it is a good allergy fighter and booster so that if you take a little bit of honey every day, it can help your body fight against those allergens. That's all you need. So here we go. We are going to put equal parts in here. And I'm in my robe, guys. I'm working from home today. And I'm going to go start out with a teaspoon of both of everything. Me too. I'm really glad. Now I am going to give a heads up if you're using powder like I am. And you can use powder. It is a little bit messier because you're going to have to strain this. So we're putting one tablespoon in there. Let's make it two. We're going to use two tablespoons of sage. Again, you can get this right out of your medicine cabinet, your spice cabinet. And then once you get this done, you can put it in your medicine cabinet. One. Two. And then we have our oregano. Again, pull it out of your spice cabinet. Sometimes we had, last night on a live, we had a, a grandmother who 
granddaughter was sick and she didn't have anything. So it made me start thinking, you know, I never shared this. And this is something that's good and you can do. So this is a pint. It's two cups. We're at the halfway mark with using two tablespoons of each herb. Gave us a total of one cup. So we're going to use that other cup that's still free in here. And we're going to put honey and apple cider vinegar with mother in here. All right, we're going to mix that up. Make sure that mother is all mixed up. We're not going to fill it to the top with the apple cider vinegar because that honey does have weight to it and it's going to rise. But what I do want to do, and I'm taking the other end of my little honey, I'm just going to kind of mix this up a little bit and then add more because these leaves are going to absorb that liquid. Not all of it, but quite a bit of it. As you can see, it sure did, so we need to add more. <coughs> Slow is better when it comes to a small jar and you have a lot of ingredients. Give it time just to mix up and absorb the liquids instead of overflowing, not having enough room to put that last little bit of goodness in there, meaning the honey in this case. We're just going to mix, 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 mix. It's still very thick. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's going to get even thicker once we add that honey. And this is just the right consistency. It's so now we're going to go ahead and add the honey and we'll be mixing this step you know a little bit at a time you can take this by the teaspoon you want this to sit for about two weeks now you know if you need to use it sooner I will say this you could put this jar into a double boiler and let it heat up so that those herbs are getting warmed up you don't want to boil it you just want to heat it so the honey is getting a little warm not hot again you don't want to ruin those medicinal properties but you can warm it up and let when it cools down you could use it but after two weeks you need to strain this because of course you don't want to be um, you wouldn't be able to get kids to swallow the uh, um, the leaves and the herbs and things like that so you'll want to strain it you'll want to use gloves because of the honey is going to be really sticky. You could use it as a poultice if you would like to. Actually any herb you could use as a poultice and that's another thing I'd like to tell you guys. If you have a tincture you can apply a tincture directly to the skin to be able to have the benefit of all the healing properties. So let's say um, you know you had uh, like I cut my finger and hops is very good at healing. Hops is actually in the cannabis family. And when I cut my finger, some hops tincture on it. Now, of course, it stung a little bit because of the alcohol, but healed up really fast, really, really fast. So you don't need to have, you don't have to have a salve or an oil because honestly, the best way to pull out those medicinal properties is with alcohol and water. And that's, if you use 100% alcohol, you've got 50% alcohol, 50% water. We're going to add just a little bit more honey. And 
and that'll be it for this little concoction. The leaves are actually, the spices are floating, and I'll show you this jar when I get done. And then you would shake it every day. Now, since I use such a tiny jar and I used a lot of herbs, it is awfully full. And it would be best for me to put this in a larger jar, which I will do. I'll probably add more herbs and more menstruum, menstruum being your liquid that you're using. But then um, after two weeks, I'll go ahead and strain this. And the mark, and the mark is all the herbs. So after you um, strain whatever medicine you're making, that leftover herb or whatever is your mark. And then I'll save those herbs and you can dehydrate them or whatever. Hold on. Somebody trying to call me. Um, so good medicine. Kids can take it. Kids can take it. Um, it's good stuff. So I just wanted to share that because we had a grandma on here on the live last night that her granddaughter was sick. She didn't have anything at home and I had suggested to her to do like a steam inhalation with these herbs. But anyway, I was thinking about this last night and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and show this. Also be over on my YouTube in full video. So if you're not following me on YouTube, please follow me on YouTube.